Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mullen. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple examples from the conversion worksheet to help you get started. One of the first things you need to do as you go through these problems is figure out what type of unit you're looking at. For example, uh, question number two has you going from calories to joules. You're going to need to recognize that calories and joules are units of energy. Number three has you going from milliliters to quarts. This is a unit of volume. So you're going to need to look on that conversion factor sh sheet in order to figure out what type of units you're talking about. Once you figure out what type of units you're talking about, you need to find a way to convert from one unit to the other. Some conversion problems are going to be one-steppers. They're only going to use one conversion factors. Some of them are going to be more than one step. For example, in this first problem, uh, number three, milliliters to quarts, you may be able to do in one step. If you know a relationship between milliliters and quarts, an equivalent statement, you can go directly from one to the other. Some of these problems you're not going to have that luxury though. You're going to have to convert to some other unit, let's say for example milliliters to ounces, and once I know ounces, if I have the, the right chart available, if I know a conversion between ounces and quart, I can actually do this conversion problem in two steps, even if I don't have the conversion factor to go from one to the other. So this first problem, I actually have a conversion factor, uh, an equivalent statement that relates milliliters and quarts. And you're going to be wanting to try to map out how you're going to get from one unit to the other. So I'm going to do this in one step with one conversion factor, and I want to find the relationship between milliliters and quarts. So I notice on a table that uh, one quart is equal to 946.3 milliliters. You're never going to have to memorize these numbers because you can use that chart on a test or quiz. Now that I have a conversion factor that relates these two, I'm going to take my starting quantity with value in unit. If you want to, feel free to put, uh, put the numbers over one. It doesn't change the value and if you have units that go in the denominator, you can actually swing those units down there. Some uh, quantities have units on the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by some conversion factor bubble. The more steps you have, the more bubbles you'll need. In this case, I'm going to let the units guide me, and I'm going to try to figure out how to get two quarts. Okay, we're looking for the number of quarts, question mark, and we're trying to get rid of milliliters. Because I know a relationship between quarts and milliliters directly, right here, I'm going to go ahead and do this in one step. So units guiding me, milliliters will cancel, I need milliliters to go on the bottom. So I look at my equivalent statement I found off the table, and the one always goes with the quart, so I'm going to put a one up here. And For some reason some students think that the one always goes on the top or the bottom. Not true. It depends upon what you need it to do. I'm going to put 946.3 next to milliliters, because one quart is 946.3 milliliters, not the other way around. To do this problem and solve it out, um, because I want my answer in quart and that's the unit left standing, I can do this in one step. In order to do this mathematically, you can just literally press multiply every time there's something in the numerator and the divide button every time you see something in the denominator. So I could multiply 150 times 1 divided by 1 divided by 946.3 and you should be able to get your final answer. When I multiply this all out, I look at my starting quantity and I notice that there's three sig figs. Because the conversion factor is a chart value, you're not going to worry about significant figures. So I'm going to report my answer to three sig figs, 0 0.159. Really quick note, if my number is greater than around 10 to the fourth or less than 10 to the negative fourth, if I do a conversion factor, if it's really big, you know, let's say 50,000, or really small, 0 0.000001. What you're going to want to do is put those numbers in scientific notation if they're really big or really small. Uh, this number is not too small, so I'm just going to leave it as 0 0.159 quarts. And if you look at the calculator, uh, I did round that answer. So there's all the work. I do want you to show units canceling for each one of these problems, um, and you need to round to the right number of sig figs. I want to go ahead and do another question for you. Uh, we'll do number five together. You're going from quarts to drops, and you're going to find that you cannot go in one step from quarts to drops. There is no 
at least on that conversion factor sh sheet. I could go look it up on Google maybe and find one, but you're not going to have Google. So I'm, I'm going to need to find an intermediate step. Some way, and you can either work forwards or backwards to get from quartz, which is a measure of volume, to drops, which is also a measure of volume. So when I look at that chart, we're going to find that I can find a, a go-between. I'm going to start with drops. And on that chart, I'm going to find that one milliliter is equal to 20 drops. Milliliter is equal to 20 drops. The reason why I chose milliliters is because I also find on that chart that when I want to go from quartz to milliliters that I have a conversion factor for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and find that, that one quart is equal to, this is the one we did last time, 946.2 milliliters. And now I have a way to go from quartz to milliliters and to drops. I really like and I really suggest to draw a map so that you know what unit you have to start with and what units you have to convert to in the process to getting to the final unit. In this case, we need to remember we're going to drops. So I'm going to go ahead and take my starting quantity, 1.32 quarts times, put a conversion factor bubble in here. I'm going to actually zoom this in a little bit so we can see this better. Okay, now I'm going to let the units guide me. I need to, to get out of my units of quarts and I said I wanted to go to milliliters first. And so why did I choose which one of these two conversion factors do I need to use first? Well it's always going to be the one that involves the units that I have to use for the first step. So I cannot convert to drops directly. I'd like to get to drops but I don't have milliliters yet. There's nothing to cancel with my, uh, I don't have any milliliters to cancel. All I have are quarts. So I'm going to have to use the second one first so that I can convert my quarts into milliliters. And one quart is equal to 946.2 milliliters. Uh, and now what would happen if I were to stop the problem here and multiply it out, uh, I would get a final answer of uh, in milliliters, whatever it might be. Um, I'm just going to put this over one. So I need to do a two-step. Okay, Whenever I need to go from one unit to another, now I'm going to do step two from milliliters to drops. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw another conversion factor bubble. And I'm going to also let the units guide me. I want to end up with drops. And I need to get rid of milliliters because right now it's on the top. I don't want milliliters in my final answer. So I'm going to put drops over milliliters. My units are already canceling. Now I need to look at the relationship between drops and milliliters. I look at my conversion factor I wrote down. One milliliter is equal to 20 drops. I can't write it any other way. The one goes with the milliliter. If I were to write it the other way, one drop is equal to 20 milliliters. It's a pretty big drop. So I multiply everything across the top. In my calculator, I punch in 1.32 times 946.2 times 20 divided by one, divided by one, divided by one. You don't need to do the last steps, but you do have to multiply everything across the top. And when you get a final answer, we need to round it to the appropriate number of sig figs, ignoring my two chart values. So I look at my starting quantity, three sig figs. That's where I'm going to round my answer. So I'm going to round this. It's going to be a large number. It's going to actually be about 25,000. Uh, 2000, yeah, 25,000. So because it's greater than 10 to the 4, I'm going to put it in scientific notation. Rounding it to three sig figs, 2.50 times 10 to the 4th drops. Now that's after I rounded it. And then we can uh, we can write in our final answer with our units. Um, and so the only unit left standing is my drops. Uh, and so this is a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad as long as you make a little chart. And you can also um, something I like to do is quarts to milliliters to drops. Uh, if you want and you want to make a longer um, map, feel free to do that above or somewhere on the margin because you may need multiple steps. You can work forwards or backwards to find a pathway to convert your units. Um, okay, uh, you're not going to be able to... Oh, one last little thing. Uh, on the very final question, there is a unit on there, and we're going to talk about this uh, in class the next couple days. Um, but a conversion factor that may be helpful is 10 to the 6 micrometers is equal to 1 meter. Um, or one micrometer is equal to 10 to the minus sixth meters. You can use either one of these conversion factors for this last problem. 
I hope that this is helpful to get you started and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.